And of course, part of the reason we have 40,000 denominations plus a number of sub-Christian cults in America is because of private interpretation or unique interpretation by one or a group of people that uh, differs from the traditional interpretation of the church. Well, the short answer, believe it or not, from a Bible-oriented person is the Nicene Creed. And I say that because uh, the discussion isn't over whether or not the Bible is inspired. We believe it's inspired cover to cover, um, given to man through the Holy Spirit. Um, but I say the Nicene Creed because the other factor in reading the scriptures is the interpretation of the scripture. And of course, part of the reason we have 40,000 denominations plus a number of sub-Christian cults in America is because of private interpretation or unique interpretation by one or a group of people that uh, differs from the traditional interpretation of the church. And so uh, in the assault on our faith in the early 4th century by a heretical uh, priest, actually, uh, named Arius. This council was convened in the summer of 325 in uh, uh, the city of Nicaea, and um, out of that came the Nicene Creed. And all of Christendom agrees that this is our statement of faith, and only very modern Christian groups would call uh, parts of it into question. Uh, but it's all, it's basically all of what the scriptures teach about Christ together with some of what they teach about the Father and the Holy Spirit. And uh, th therefore, it's a real benchmark of our faith. Uh, now, related to that is this. The reason most Bible-oriented people want to be careful students of the Scripture is so that they will be able to know the truth and communicate that truth to other people. Uh, orthodoxy takes a slightly different look at that. And it comes off of the conversation that Jesus had with uh, the woman at the well, uh, whom we know as St. Fotini. Uh, that's how she goes down in church history. We don't know her name out of the New Testament text. But uh, he tells her that the Father, God the Father, is looking for people to worship him in spirit and in truth. And of course the spirit there would mean in the power and the enlightenment of the Holy Spirit, and the truth there is just the truth. You need both elements in true worship. And the reason the Orthodox Church is so careful about its doctrine, that it is on target, is that that way we, we know we're worshiping in truth. And um, so the motivation is to keep worship right. We need to understand rightly the word of truth. And... Um, so A, the Nicene Creed is a summation of our faith, um, and B, we, are, we pursue the truth so that we worship rightly. And I would say that that is the core. Um, the most important thing about the service is, uh, the, is the Eucharistic sacrifice, the sacrament of the Eucharist. Uh, some say, well, you're crucifying the Son of God afresh, and that, that never crosses the mind, frankly, of either an Orthodox or a Roman Catholic. That's really sort of a cheap shot. Uh, we know he's been, that he died once for all, the book of Hebrews tells us, for our sins. And, uh, but we represent this once for all sacrifice to the Father. There's a line in the liturgy where the priest says, thine own of thine own we offer you on behalf of all and for all. We do not think up some kind of a sacrifice. This is, this is the once for all sacrifice of Christ for us that we represent to the Father on Sunday morning. So uh, these areas are the, are the very core of, the, of our faith.